What are Americans taught life in Germany is like? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. Four years ago, we moved to Germany with the hope to discover what daily life is like for a different country and culture. Of course, we couldn't help but come in with some preconceived notions about what it might be like based on stereotypes of life in Europe and specifically Germany that Americans have, but we did our best to come in with an open mind. Over the last four years on our quest to see the world from a different perspective, we have found a lot of things that maybe the US has exaggerated or maybe even has flat out wrong about what life in Europe or specifically in Germany truly is all about. Or to be honest, there are simply a lot of things that Americans know about one particular European country and then generalizes it to say that it is an entirely European characteristic when it actually isn't, leaving us confused when we move to Germany didn't see that thing. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today in my video. In your head, it's a dreamland, but is it more than we understand? When the US talks about Germany, it's hard to do so without talking about beer. Because Germans are born with a Maas in hand, of course. Well, I've talked a lot on our channel about false stereotypes surrounding Germany's relationship with beer and busted how Germany actually isn't even Europe's largest beer consumer. Beer isn't even the most consumed beverage in Germany or how alcohol percentages generally aren't actually any different from American beers. And today, I wanna to talk about one of the most prolific beliefs in the US about beer in Germany, and that is that beer is cheaper than water in Germany, specifically in restaurants. When I first came to Germany in 2014 with a study abroad program at my university, I remember lots of false rumors around German beer culture being thrown around amongst the students because one thing they were most excited about was the fact that as underage minors in the US, they would be able to legally drink in Germany where the drinking age is significantly lower. This widely held belief that beer in Germany is cheaper than water also excited these broke college students because not only could they legally drink, they could actually afford it. Now, it wasn't just my study abroad group that believed this, but it is a rumor you can find all over the internet. But let's look at why this isn't actually true. One factor to this American lie is that across the US, US states impose what are referred to commonly as sin taxes to items that are deemed to be harmful or sinful, you could say. One such sin tax is on alcohol, and because it's so high, generally this does make alcohol in the US rather more expensive than what you can get in Germany where alcohol, especially beer, isn't so taboo. So when Americans come to Germany and see how much beer costs, they might freak out at how cheap it is and then eventually this cheapness starts to get a little exaggerated as the story grows once they are back in the US and explaining what they experienced abroad. Add on top of that, Americans are used to going to restaurants in the US where you typically can just order water for free and you will receive endless refills of free tap water. Well, German restaurants aren't legally required to give free tap water, so it is very common that you can't just order free water at a German restaurant like you can in America. Sometimes you can ask and they might oblige, but they generally won't be happy about it considering they make more money from drink profit margins than from the food. But a shocking thing for Americans is that not only do you not get free water in Germany, but water will cost even more than they are expecting expecting to pay because water is usually served in nice glass bottles rather than just water straight from the tap. So add on to the fact that alcohol is generally cheaper than what you get in the US and not only is water not free in Germany but costs quite a bit more than Americans would expect, the tale about the value comparison of beer to water in Germany continues to grow. It is actually also German law that when alcohol is being sold, there must be at least one non-alcohol drink on the menu that is cheaper than the alcohol options. 
reasons. As I mentioned about the free water at American restaurants, a lot of people do this not out of health reasons, but because it is a money-saving way of having a drink with your meal. Well, the same concept applies to this situation. In general, since you don't get free water at German restaurants, the German government doesn't want people being encouraged to drink alcohol simply because it is the cheapest drink on the menu. But with that in mind, to confirm that beer isn't cheaper than water in Germany, I looked at a few restaurants' menus and this is what I found. For example, here. Wait. A glass of water here costs three euro twenty, but you can get a coolish beer for two euro sixty. That means the beer is cheaper than water. Well, okay, technically that beer is smaller than the water you'd get, and the equally sized beer by volume would be more expensive at three euro ninety. But the law states a non-alcoholic drink must be made available. Not necessarily that water needs to be cheaper than the alcohol options. So. Generally, the beer will be a little more than the water by volume, but you might find a smaller volume of beer that is cheaper than a water on the menu, but it is not value cheaper. Now, I have heard that beer is generally cheaper than water in the Czech Republic, and although I have been there, I can't remember and can't personally confirm if this is true, but maybe one of you can confirm for us if beer really is generally always cheaper than water in the Czech Republic. <laughs> I once had a friend who messaged me and said that she wanted to bring her children over to Europe for an extended period of time to allow them to experience other cultures and ways of life. And she was thinking specifically about bringing them to Germany. She wanted our tips where she should look into going, and she laid out some of her wants to see if we could pick a city or town that aligned with what she was looking for. One of her desires was that she wanted to be able to take her kids to the local market every day to pick out their groceries for the day. And this isn't an idea unique to her. This is the general romanticized idea that Americans have of Europe just like it was described on the germanway.com. Many Americans dream of life in Europe with an image of shopping for cheese at the local market, conversing with the farmer that milked the cow, and taking home a chunk of smelly deliciousness. There is an idea in the US that all European cities and villages have a local outdoor or maybe covered market every day, usually in the main town square, and Europeans go there to buy fresh produce every day for what they need rather than a supermarket. I'll admit, it is a very romantic idea. Unfortunately, I had to tell my friend that what she is imagining and this blog described is surprisingly not the case in Germany, and the reality is significantly less romantic. So if you don't want to have your fairy tale dream of Germany destroyed, maybe stop watching now. So sure, some towns do have a market like this. For example, in Frankfurt or in Munich, you have food markets open every day besides Sunday, but overall, this isn't really a thing in Germany. If anything, towns might have a farmer's market or food markets once or maybe twice a week, just like in the US, but generally not every day. What Germany is famous for, though, is their discount grocery stores like Aldi, Netto, Lidl, Penny, etc. This is where Germans will go shopping and bask in the glories of their extremely affordable groceries. Again, not as romantic as this. For this, you would have to look more at, say, Spain, France, or Italy, possibly. But another part of this European cheese and farmer market romanticized idea is that Germans, or Europeans in general, go and get fresh groceries every day to be eaten that day. This is as opposed to the American tendency to shop once a week or once every two weeks and do one massive grocery trip haul for food to be consumed over a long period of time. Well, this is also generally a romantic idea that isn't true, I unfortunately have to say. You don't see fairy tale princesses walking around town with their wicker baskets taking home the food they will eat that day. Rather, data shows that over half of Germans also grocery shop once or two times a week to collect all their groceries, and only 12% shop daily or almost daily. There will be trend differences between cities and more rural tendencies to shop where maybe one can drive to a grocery store more easily outside of larger cities so they can limit their grocery trips, but this is almost almost exactly the same trend as in the US generally. Oddly enough, there are a few beliefs that many Americans hold true when it comes to German bathroom habits. Why are we concerned with what Europeans or specifically Germans do in the bathroom? I don't know. But one of the first things that Americans believe to be true is that as a whole, Europeans prefer to bathe over taking showers. In fact, I must share that this was one of those beliefs we had when we first moved to Germany and unfortunately perpetuated in one of our first videos after moving here. Speaking of showers, 
A lot of Europeans do not take showers, they just take baths. I must come clean and admit that we were wrong and actually only every eighth German gets in a bathtub more than once a week. That's why they smell. <laughs> Just kidding. No, they may not get in a bathtub more than once a week because they generally prefer showering over baths to get clean. 91% of German survey participants said they shower multiple times a week and over half of those shower daily. But in case you were wondering, 45% of Germans are strictly warm douches. Besides that bathroom habit, there's also a general idea that Europeans are big time bidet users. However, come to Germany and you may be like my American friend who visited for the first time and had this surprise. Can I tell you the one thing I did expect was bidets? Oh uh, yeah. There's, there's, I've not, I've not found a bidet in Germany. To be honest, this is again a case of falsely applying a stereotype to an entire continent when in reality, this is a very country specific bathroom device. Some data that I found stated that nearly every Italian and over 90% of Portuguese, Spaniards, French, and Greeks own a bidet while only 3% of Germans have one. In fact, even Germans can be found asking the same question Americans ask on their first trip to France and come into contact with a bidet. How does one use a bidet? That's that's how we ended up with a toilet paper crisis in Germany, just like the US did during the panic buying of 2020. Then there's the idea that German men sit while peeing. Wait, that's actually not a lie. That's true. They are all Zitzpinklers. This next closely held belief isn't necessarily about Europe or Germany specifically, but because Americans believe this one thing about itself, and in a way, because they believe it about themselves, it is a lie taught about other countries in the world, and that is that the US is the most free nation in the world. I actually just did an entire video about the subject where I discussed if we feel more free in Germany or in the US. And I'll go ahead and I'll save you 15 minutes by telling you that. I do personally actually feel more free in the US, generally speaking still. However, this isn't a set in stone feeling that the US is more free than Germany. If anything, I would say my belief about freedom has become significantly more nuanced and not so binary where one country is more free than another. For example, in Germany, we have the freedom to technically drive as fast as we want on large parts of the Autobahn where there are no speed limits. In Germany, people have a lot more freedom to sunbathe nude or topless than in the US. In Germany and the US, you have the freedom to study at university, but in Germany, universities rarely will cost you more than 300 euro a semester, whereas in the US, you're going to be looking at tens of thousands of dollars, making it so that a lot of people don't actually have the freedom to study because they can't afford it. But does all of that make Germany more free? In the US, you could have the freedom to use marijuana recreationally in some parts, unlike in Germany. In the US, you have more freedom of speech than in Germany in many ways. In the US, you have the freedom to hold as many citizenships as you want, but in Germany, the current law, currently in process of changing actually, states that there are only a few exceptions in which they will allow you to hold more than one citizenship. So does that make the US more free? Well, we actually can look at different organizations that rank countries and their freedom based on different factors like wisevoter.com, which ranks Switzerland as the most free country in the world, with Germany ranking at 15 and the US at 17, or worldpopulationreview.com, which also ranks Switzerland as the most free nation in the world, and Germany and the US tying at 15. But in my opinion, I kind of look at it a little more blurry, where for example, the US is more free in some aspects compared to Germany and less free in other aspects. Not one being necessarily truly more free than the other. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is, is Pirates of the Caribbean the best movie series ever made? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in my next video. And that's exactly what I'm gonna buy. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. In your head, it's a dreamland, but is there more that? In your head, it's a dreamland, but is.